When my Mayan ancestors invented drinking chocolate, they included an ingredient that many people sadly admit, hot peppers. On a slow morning, it's satisfying to mix a drink with my molcajete, but today I'm in a rush. These packets are fast, right? Well, and let's see, add the chocolate in, and it's not quite the same, but this is basically hot pepper, right? Uh, so let's just give this a try. Uh, add in hot water. Good. And now stir. So here's the question for you. Should I give it to my family as is, or should I taste it first? That's the question in today's class, which is about the obligation to experiment. While research ethics regulations require us to think about harm to research participants, that doesn't mean that we should avoid testing things that could be harmful. In the obligation to experiment, my co-authors and I argue that the greater the harm or benefit, the greater reason we have to test something if its effects are unknown. That's even more the case if the intervention affects large numbers of people. We already expect testing with food, water, drugs, cars, and electronics, but it's been a longer debate over testing policy and behavioral interventions. While most people wouldn't get a car that hadn't been independently crash tested, it's still rare to independently test digital interventions on our beliefs and behaviors. The two other readings explore this further. Anne Oakley summarizes a century of social experimentation, and the optional reading from the New York Times by Gordon Pennycook and David Rand explains why testing public health messages is so important during the COVID-19 pandemic. So what do you think? Do we need more experimentation in society? How do we balance the obligation to experiment with the need to restrain its abuses? And most importantly, should I give this drink to my family without tasting it? Wonderful. Uh, excellent. See you in class.